Hey everybody, it's Jeff, and this is the Indie Game Legend 3D Development Log Update 8. Update. Two more weeks have passed and lots was done, all gearing up for a GDC party showing and the upcoming preview release. Let's take a look at some of the bigger stuff we got done. Up until now, we've had no on-screen gun graphics or gun models, but Paul did put together a quick gun sprite to try. Unfortunately, the angle of the gun is pretty important to align with the direction of the bullets, and our first pass at this gun sprite was not going to do it. I had an idea I wanted to try, which was to use a 3D object with a pixelation effect to make a sort of fake sprite-looking gun, since much of the game and screen aesthetic is pixel art. The 3D object could be positioned however I wanted and be animated by code. Using a basic cylinder shape showed promise, but it didn't come together until I modeled an actual gun. It was loosely inspired by the NES Zapper, which I felt was appropriate and Paul really loved. Once it had some recoil, it was officially a success. It really ties the game together. Every once in a while, I remember how one should optimize for minimal draw calls. It made me think, wait, what if there was an automated process to create a single material with a texture atlas of all the textures? That would mean all the static geometry, for example, could take only a single draw call. Turns out that's half of what Mesh Baker does, a popular asset on the asset store that not only combines meshes, but combines their materials. I did a test using Mesh Baker to bake just the walls and floors, and I got a 40% performance improvement. What's crazy is that performance-wise, it was nearly indistinguishable from just not rendering the walls and floors at all. Some geometry will have to be fixed before I can apply this properly, but I highly recommend this tool. So far, the only game input is the gamepad. I like to design games gamepad first, but the release we're looking at is PC, and you can't really expect people not to use a keyboard and mouse on PC, so I finally got keyboard and mouse input working. The tricky part was mouse sensitivity and smoothing, which I've never really gotten right before. Is it fucking with me? Like, I'm not even telling a difference. But I got a pretty decent first pass in now. We had some fixes and changes to make to the first boss, but it involved a lot of physics forces. So I had to change the boss to a rigid body, which is a totally different way to program movement. So this was non-trivial, I had to rewrite everything and make an ad hoc state machine, and it turns out I have zero real experience programming rigid bodies beyond the basics. They're tricky and not fun to debug. I got the improvements in, but there's now more room for improvement. But I do think that rigid bodies are the way we'll go for all moving bosses. After seeing the vapor vents in action in Sector 3, Paul asked if there was a limit to how many vents there could be. I said there wasn't really, and so he went crazy with having me add more. Some rooms are now entirely surrounded with vapor pluming vents, but it's actually pretty great. It started with the electric floors, which people were not recognizing as electric, so I decided to add a spark effect with a particle system. And it's not the best looking spark, but it does get the idea across. I have a hard time getting the look I want with particle systems, I just don't have enough experience yet. But I did also add bubbles to the purple swamp. And then I finally came back to the checkpoints, which playtesting showed that people would easily miss. So now when they're active, they have a cool particle effect that you can't miss. Paul and I planned to go to GDC, but we had no real promotional plans for the game there. Then one day, Paul came to me and said, we're featured at a party. Sure enough, Paul got us in to show the game briefly at a party called The Other Party. RSVP is open to anybody, so if you're in San Francisco next week on Tuesday night, try to come out and say hi. After GDC, our immediate goal is an official announcement of the game, which means an announcement trailer. Otherwise, we'll be back to the goal of a preview release of these first three sectors. That means more polish and finally getting back to those dastardly game menus. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and feel free to follow along the day-to-day -day on Twitch as we continue to develop the indie game legend 3D.